you haven't already, please go ahead and click on the subscribe button. And while you're at it, click on that little bell too. Yeah, is this your first time in Chicago? No, uh, I've been here for a couple of other movies. The first Saw movie, we came here for a press tour. And then the first Insidious movie. And then I actually came here to write the first draft of this movie. I used to, before I had kids, I used to uh, fly to random cities and like hole up in a hotel room for a week or so just writing to try and get as much writing done as possible when I came to Chicago for right. this film. Very cool. <laughs> you started off as an actor, mm -hmm. got into writing, mm -hmm. you're dipping your toe into the directing. <laughs> yeah. If you had to pick one right now, because I, I know you like to write and direct, but yeah. if you had to pick one. Oh, if I had to pick one, I would probably go with directing. Really? Yeah, because okay. you, you know, writing is a solitary profession, as you know. <laughs> it's a lonely profession. And I feel like directing lets you dip your toes in all of those pools. Like, you're not acting, but you work with the actors. You're not writing, but you work with the script, you know. And you get to, you get to have the most visceral fun because you're there on the set and then you're in the edit room. And, and one stage that I love of filmmaking is sound mixing. I love adding that layer of sound. It's actually, to me, in my opinion, it's the first time the film really comes to life. I don't know why that is, but for some reason when that sound and you start mixing the music, it's like, oh, there's the movie, right. you know? And so I, I would choose directing. You got a movie coming out. Yep. <laughs> um, what inspired this story for you? This story was really uh, a, just a concept that kind of popped into my head one day. It wasn't like I was reading articles about tech or researching a particular topic. It was really just the image of a guy who was a quadriplegic having a chip installed that would move his limbs for him. And that's usually how it works with me in terms of film ideas. It's usually a concept or even a fragment of the story. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be the whole story fully formed. It could just be one fragment and I'll start obsessing on it. You know, I can't sleep, I keep thinking about it and it starts expanding into hopefully a movie. Have you ever watched Black Mirror? Yes. <laughs> that was the first impression that I got from them. Right. And I was just thinking like, I'd love to see you just do a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> yeah, like I would love to do you a Black know, Mirror like, episode. There's a freedom yeah. in that because you know, because it's an anthology series mm -hmm. and you're making a self-contained story, you can kind of just go wild. So I would love to do that. Are you listening, Black Mirror executives? You heard it. <laughs> you know, working with Blumhouse, can you talk about, you know, their approach to filmmaking and, and you know, going with like the, the more indie, lower budget films, but like, would you say that that's changing the game, so to speak, or is it just kind of like a temporary thing? Or talk about your experience with working with them. Well, my experience with them has been great. They, they have a company policy, and, and, and not a lot of production companies in Hollywood will stick to their policy this much, but they have a set budget they want to make films for, and they don't have any frills, you know, they don't go for the big trailers or any of that stuff. They just want to make films in this lean and mean way. But the thing that they offer you in exchange for sacrificing the, the frills and the perks is creative freedom. You get to make the film you want to make. Um, they're not there on set micromanaging you. They really get you to make it. And that is something that is so valuable to me. Probably the most valuable thing in filmmaking to me is, is creative freedom. And so I like working with them in that respect. The trick of it is that it's a real live by the sword, die by the sword process because sure, they let you make the movie you wanna make, but if that film doesn't work, they're like, sorry oh, kid, yeah. Yeah, it's all, yeah, it's, so that's you. Yeah. And, and, and you know, a lot of their movies don't get a theatrical release, but they're, because of this system they work in, they're able to, one get out is able to pay for 10 movies that went to VOD. So I like that process and, I, and I've had a really fulfilling experience. And with this movie, this was kind of outside their box. This, it's not a horror movie, it, it's a little bit of a bigger world. So I think they had a tough time wrapping their heads around it, but to their credit, 
they they kept pushing and they let me make the film. They found a way to do it, you know? So, but in terms of the mechanics of going from horror to right. sci-fi and action, can you talk about that with, in regards with this film? Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting because when you're writing a sci-fi and action film, if you think about the set pieces that a movie offers an audience, these are the things that you want the audience to be talking about when they leave the theatre. So with a horror movie, you're talking about scare scenes, right? Or messed up images that, that the audience walks out going, can you believe that scene? Um, with sci-fi and action, those scenes are expensive because we're talking about fight scenes, car chases, um, tech. I mean, if it's sci-fi, I think there is a version of sci-fi that you can make on a really micro budget. If you think about a film like Primer or, you know, these movies, they're kind of heady sci-fi movies, but most of the time, sci-fi movies are relying on tech to uh, whether it's an alien spaceship or a robot so all of that stuff costs money in a way that a ghost standing at the end of a hallway in a house does not right. horror is just such a budget friendly genre so that was challenging you're right and and because when i the challenge of it was how do i give the genre action and sci-fi fans what they want whilst making it within this box the way to do it, I found out, is to really just play Tetris. Like, it's really like, I'll give you this, it's bargaining. Like, I'll give you this scene, but you have to give me this scene. And the producers, will, and then they'll come to me the next day and say, okay, we can't afford to do, we can't afford to rip the guy's head off. And so I'll say, li literally I'll say, what if we don't rip his head off, but we rip his arm off? Yeah, yeah or we cut him, yeah. 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 We cut, what if we almost cut his head off? And it's, it sounds hilarious, but that's really how it's done. It's like you're the producer and I'm bargaining with you like and somehow through that process you whittle the film down to what it is in the movie I, I really liked you know maybe this is more of the story aspect but like mm -hmm. one of the themes that I really that that really stuck out to me was this whole battle between the future and mm -hmm. being practical and being human like can you talk yeah. about that dynamic that he, that's happening because you know the main character he's you know uh, <laughs> everything by his hands kind yep, of guy, yep. but he's living in a very futuristic world. Can you, can you talk about that theme and dynamic in the film? Yeah, that was something I wanted the lead character to embody is that he's an analog guy in this technological world and he's really being made irrelevant. Like his skill set isn't required anymore. People don't drive these uh, older model cars anymore. So for me, I wanted uh, the lead character, Gray, to really embody that theme of tech versus analog and you're right it, it, it is about that and and uh i'm somebody who's i don't hate technology i'm not a luddite but i i'm suspicious or wary of where we're going when we hand a lot of ourselves to computers like how far is automation going to go how irrelevant how irrelevant are we going to make ourselves you know could there be a sequel um well okay could there be a sequel sure Will there be a sequel? That is something that's determined by you and all those people out there. I feel like a sequel is a champagne problem that is created by the success of a movie. And I'm, I'm way too superstitious about movies to think about the sequel before the original films come out. I don't want to anger the movie gods. They're watching. <laughs> and uh, as soon as I start planning a sequel in my head, I can hear, I can hear the movie gods say, uh, oh, really? You think so? A sequel, huh? pretty presumptuous of you <laughs> so I try to anytime that thought of a sequel comes into my mind I try to push it out of my mind so give me that problem I, I would love it if this film was successful enough to warrant a sequel but I would love to keep making these genre films because I feel like there's a lot you can say in a genre film look at a film like Get Out look at what that was able to say about the world we live in within the confines of a, of a, of a horror film of a genre film you, you, you can't get away with that in other genres in the same way. And it's really smart. It's almost like Jordan Peele smuggled uh, a, a thematic look at our world into uh, a horror film. And, and so I love that about horror. And I, I am, I'll, I'll give you the exclusive. Uh, I, I'm, I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I am working on a horror film right now that is based on an older story, but I'm trying to bring my own modern take to it, put it into our modern world. And it's for Universal, so it's a bit more of a, a studio film, but um, 
you'll know it when you see it. I won't give you the title, but when it, if, it, if it does come out, you'll be like, that's what he was talking about. Okay, awesome. All right, so there you go. I want you to tell the audience out here uh, yep. why they should go see Upgrade. Oh, man. See, I'm Australian. The Australian way is to be like, I, I shouldn't tell you what to see. You know, we don't, in America, we don't like, fine. oh, we're in America. Fine. Sell, 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 baby. Okay, guys, here's why you should go and see Upgrade. Because I feel like balls to the wall, genre, sci-fi, action movies that are fun, they're lacking a little bit lately. You know, I mean, you do have your big Marvel movies, but I'm talking about balls to the wall. I'm talking about visceral fight scenes, people being killed left and right, car chases, all this stuff that I grew up watching with films like Robocop and The Terminator. That's what I'm doing with this film. So I really feel like you'll enjoy it. And if not, money back. Not from me. Sorry, what was that? 